So first, uh, I'd like to thank organizers for very kind invitations. I'm very much pleased to give a talk here on this uh, neutral conference. And uh, after the theoretical talks, uh, I'll mainly discuss about experimental aspects of uh, nuclear structure studies, mostly nuclear metric studies. So um, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, OK, so I want to discuss about uh, mainly five main discussions, uh, uh, experimental aspect, why uh, and how do we study experimentally neutral nuclear response and nuclear structures? And the second, how do a single beta gamma experiment help study neutral response? And how are charge exchange reactions used? And how about leptons, mu, and neutrinos and photons are useful? And finally, uh, how the actual or vector coupling constants are renormalized? And very few summary there remarks. Uh, so first, I will discuss about uh, uh, why and how do we study experimentally nuclear responses. Uh, as already discussed, I think the major neutrino questions, because neutrino is really a key particle of particle and nuclear and astrophysics. Major neutrino questions, for example, like uh, neutrino properties, like Dirac or Majorana, absolute mass scale, uh, uh, lepton sector CP phases or leptogenesis, and uh, astro neutrino nuclear interactions, and also neutrino nuclear synthesis. These fundamental questions of neutrinos are studied by investigating nuclear beta, double beta decays, and astro neutrino interactions in nuclei, where neutrino nuclear responses or nuclear structures are very crucial. Uh, so, as already discussed, uh, the neutrino response it's, uh, is given like this. Uh, you know, experimentally, we studied the uh, transition rate, but it's phase space and nuclear metric element and particle physics properties like mass or, for example, you know, supernova neutrino flux, the temperature, and so on. So, and uh, we. we <coughs> And the nuclear metric element involved in double beta decays, for example, as already discussed, we have uh, axial vector and uh, uh, vector part and a tensor part. And, but also important is this axial vector or even vector, they are renormalized in nuclei because of various kind of nuclear correlations and non nuclear degree of freedoms. And the nuclear metric element is given by this uh, neutrino potentials. And because of denominator, we have a momentum transfer around a couple of 10 or 100 MeV. Therefore, the you know, momentum involved is from zero to maybe four and five and so on. And uh, if we write this double beta decay metric element as the product of a single beta, it's not exactly so. But the metric element involved is uh, uh, it's angular momentum, it's approximately from zero to five plus minus, but this is in contrast to two newton beta decay. The momentum is around three MeV and mostly gamma tera one plus stage. And very similar in case of astro Newton physics and uh, for example, supernova, neutron energy is approximately up to 50 MeV and the momentum 50 MeV over C and angular momentum involved is from zero to maybe two minus or three plus minus. So, you know, these double beta decay responses and astro Newton responses are very much, you know, uh, are common. And we really want to know the neutrino nuclear responses in the region around the momentum transfer from 5 to 100 MeV and angular momentum from 0 to maybe 4 or 5 and so on. You know, metric element, as I said, it's uh, you know, axial vector and vector and also tensor. And uh, <clears throat> so these are very much sensitive to neutrino uh, long range or short range nuclear correlations and uh, non nuclear degree of freedom and also nuclear medium effect and so on. Therefore, because that it's uh, theoretically, it's not straightforward to evaluate 
precisely this uh, no, renormalized coupling constant and matrix elements. Therefore, we can use uh, experimental study like this, and experimentally we study this particle and this particle, and the experiment include uh, uh, not only this matrix element, this whole experimental matrix element include uh, somehow renormalized uh, effective coupling constant. And uh, so experimentally, we, uh, we use uh, weak response, uh, weak interactions or uh, electromagnetic interactions because of spin ice spin operators and also strong interactions, very similar spin ice spin operators. And in case of double beta decay from here to here, or astro-neutron interactions, neutrino, and uh, uh, this is charge current astro-neutron interactions for this matrix element. For this part, we can study by using neutrinos and also charge exchange reactions, prime heading three P reactions, and beta decays. And for this side, we can study, uh, uh, for example, muon capture reactions, and also, and also photons, and also beta decays, and so on, and also charge exchange reactions. So, um, Uh, okay, so now let's go how the single beta decay uh, matrix element experimentally, what we can learn from that. Uh, already we study from these uh, works, uh, you know, how this gamma tera transition, this is a mass number, it's renormalized and also spin dipole because spin dipole plays a very important roles in double beta decays and also supernova neutrinos and also higher multiple like M4. And these matrix elements, uh, if we write it down in unit of uh, uh, quasi particle nuclear matrix element, it's very much uniformly denormalized like 0.2 or 0.3 and so on. And uh, the reason is this uh, denormalization with respect to uh, quasar particle, it comes from nuclear or long range correlations like spin ice spin correlations, which are included in quasar particle approximations, like this maybe 0.4 or so, but uh, still we need additional denormalizations which are not included in QRP. But it may be due to some non nuclear degree of freedom or nuclear medium and so on, something like this, about 60%. Uh, okay, so uh, if I write it, uh, you know, for the single beta decay, multipolarity one, and also two, gamma ray and beta decay and also for, you know, these matrix elements are very much uniformly renormalized by a coefficient around 0.2 or 0.3 and so on. So, and partly due to nuclear correlations and partly due to non-nuclear correlations. So, uh, but how about uh, in case of uh, very much uh, Deformed nuclei, for example, tantalium, that is very important nuclei in astronuclear physics because that is uh, produced by neutrino nuclear synthesis. And we studied how this gamma decay or beta decay is uh, reduced because of this K quantum number. K is uh, angular momentum with respect to this uh, symmetry axis. And uh, by including this K quantum number systematically, we can find the reduction due to this K quantum number deviations, and we get this, uh, you know, uh, uh, lifetime, which is much longer than experiment, uh, but it's very interesting to study from astro neutron physics. Um, okay, so what we learn about uh, nuclear charge exchange reactions, and uh, uh, as already uh, have shown, I think. Uh, uh, this is our RCNP, very beautiful beam lines, cyclotron and beam lines, and also spectrograph, which gives a fantastic energy resolution like this, which, this, which is very important to really 
precisely study nuclear responses for individual levels in medium nuclei, that is double beta decay nuclei and so on. And the fourth study is helium-3 T reactions and the momentum transfer on 20 and 200 mg and angular momentum transfer. And we get how this nuclear response for this uh, spin, isospin operators. And, uh, okay, so uh, let's look at, this is uh, energy spectrum, but before doing, you know, we studied uh, systematically all these charge exchange reactions in collaboration with uh, the Hatsia person, Peter Prekas, and uh, our colleagues. And uh, important is because our energy particle a nucleon that is 0.2 GeV, where spin isospin excitations is really dominant. Therefore, we can very selectively uh, you know, study the spin isospin responses uh, by using these charge exchange reactions. But let's see for low line state, we have one plus or two minus state and so on. These are very important for the beta decays and also internal physics. But these are very much, you know, strengths are very much are small, but this we have always very huge giant resonance, zero plus giant resonance, analog state as well and the gamma tera giant resonance, and the spin dipole giant resonance. So you see here, most of uh, these, uh, you know, gamma tera or two minus strings in low lying state are pushed up to this giant resonance, zero plus and one plus, so minus. And that is uh, one of the major, you know, reasons why these nuclear matrix elements are very much reduced because of this strong you know, shift of the strings. So how about uh, you know, spin dipole? We very recently studied uh, uh, this uh, data, and this is uh, our uh, simple uh, evaluation of the spin dipole matrix element. And this is the spin dipole matrix element extracted from the cross section of charge exchange reactions. And the very good one to one correspond tell us you know, how this uh, spin ice spin matrix element can be studied uh, by using charge exchange reactions. And now I think we are really pushing this program forward to study this spin dipole matrix element, which are uh, plays a very important role in double beta decays. And how about this uh, momentum uh, dependence? And we studied, uh, you know, uh, these cross sections uh, should be very simply given like this. This is, uh, if this is plane wave, we have a spherical vessel functions, but uh, if we have uh, some momentum dependence matrix element, it can be written like this. And how about this matrix element depending on this momentum renormalization or not? But experimental distributions for a zero plus state and one plus state and two minus state in the large momentum range from zero to maybe 100 or 100, 100 MeV over C. In this wide momentum regions, this experimental data are very well described with constant denormalization factor, and also these spherical vessel functions. So this tells us that uh, these denormalizations in a wide range of uh, momentum, it is about constantly, about it's denormalized constantly. Okay, so how about this uh, uh, two Newton matrix element, and I compared with this uh, uh, Newton matrix element, how is the nuclear structure dependent? And this keeps in this energy mass regions. This is a, um, two neutral matrix element experimental and our calculations. And it shows like this and very similar structure like this. And here it's very much structure like this. And this region is just a middle shell. And also this, and because this gets very close to the magic number. So it's very much similar, you know, uh, nuclear structure dependence which we found, uh, experimentally found, and we reproduced. Uh, that is also seen in uh, neutron, stick, neutron decays. So neutron matrix element also reflect some nuclear uh, configuration dependent, which already seen in uh, two neutron double beta decays. OK, so how about uh, double, beta, uh, double charge exchange reactions? and? Uh, uh, for example, uh, this type of double, double charge exchange reactions, 
it's very hopeful to get some good information about neutrinos double beta decays, but we have to be very careful about, in this case, you know, interaction, nuclear interactions involved, there are various kind of nuclear interactions. In contrast to our helium 3 p reactions, where we do have only one dominant nuclear interaction. Therefore, maybe we need to very careful study of these double charge exchange reactions and, uh, you know, uh, uh, energy dependent to get uh, that nuclear matrix element relevant to uh, double beta decays. But uh, I want to just import, uh, emphasize that, uh, you know, these double beta decays, not only two neutrino, but also zero neutrino, it's very much like to go giant resonance and also double giant resonance. And our experiments show that uh, double charge exchange reactions in the low range regions, it's very much small, but it's very much strength shifted to higher excitation regions. This is just what we have found for single beta decades. So this already tells us about very severe, uh, you know, uh, reduction of the nuclear matrix element in case of double beta decades, just we have seen in single beta decades. Okay, so uh, next I'll discuss about uh, photons and uh, uh, recently we are studying leptons by using, uh, you know, lepton. Uh, the muons produced by you know, the protons, and such muon capture, we can study this side of, and so muon, neutrino, we get all these excited states, and this state decay by emitting number of neutrons. Therefore, the excitation strength can be obtained by studying this, you know, mass distribution by studying this beta and gamma rays. And these are studies of this, and uh, our experiment tells us uh, Uh, like this, uh, you know, this from gamma ray spectrum, we get this uh, mass distributions, and from our mass distributions are quite well reproduced by using, by, uh, so this indicates neon giant resonance like this. So again, neon strength is very much concentrated in these regions, and these regions decay mostly one neutron, we get this final state, and so on. Okay, uh, this muon capture reactions, already is, uh, other way of studying is uh, like this study of this muon capture strength and uh, subtract the, all these gamma rays uh, contributions, uh, subtract contributions from higher states and like this. And this is one way to get a muon neutrino response particular for this particular state. Okay, how about uh, neutrino and uh, you know, uh, this type of neutrino reactions uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, by using DEB protons, and we get many pions, and pion decays, and muon decays, and then we get uh, this fast signal of this muon, and also very slow signal coming from this uh, neutrino. And this neutrino energy range is around from 0 to 15 MeV, and, and these neutrinos are just the neutrinos which can be used to study neutrino nuclear responses relevant to double beta decay and supernova neutrinos. And uh, I think this is, uh, uh, in future, very promising because of uh, very high flux of neutrinos, but we need really a very big detectors. So, uh, but how about uh, transfer reactions? And uh, that extensively studied by these groups, and transfer reaction tells us about how this, uh, you know, nuclear surface, we have a single nucleon or a single nucleon hole by transferring particles from here to here or from to here to here. But important is uh, by doing this type of experiment, they get, uh, you know, that such occupancy or vacancy probabilities and how many nucleons there and how many holes there. But the sum should be kind of, this is a kind of sum rule that it's uh, all number of particle and holes should be to J plus one, but experimental they got about, about 55%. So this is uh, also the case of E prime P. And uh, so this is also very interesting renormalization factors because uh, in a nuclear, single nucleons are not really like free nucleons. 
Okay, so uh, finally, I think I want to discuss about uh, the cranking that's already discussed by Professor Yakel. And as I said, you know, low lying state, its very strength uh, as a function of some rule, it's about uh, maybe a few percent. But even including this high lying state, we are getting about 55%. And 55% means that that's, you know, just like transfer reactions, neutron go to proton. And the number of vacancy is about n minus z, and also you know it's an equilibrium estimate three for free free neutron, but experimentally it's only 55 percent. So it's really this nucleon is not behave like free nucleon as Selmer or QRP and so on because of the short range or some many uh, nuclear medium effect and so on. So. Uh, And also, uh, just, this is just schematic view and how this is single nucleon, uh, nuclear response, and this is uh, you know, giant resonance, and giant resonance is uh, destructively interfere, and therefore we get this, it's uh, uh, renormalized how much this is one plus chi, and the chi we call this is uh, susceptibility, which is given by just the ratio of uh, giant resonance energy and just typical average energy like this. So this is a kind of renormalization due to nucleon long range correlations causing giant resonance. But in addition to that, we do need some non nucleonic uh, you know, effect or short range effect and so on. And the pion and these fields are not necessarily the same as for free nucleons. And so, so the effect can be studied. If it's due to isobar, it affects only GA, but if it's uh, additional, then we may have such vector uh, coupling to be also renormalized. So very careful study of GA and GA renormalizations are very important. Okay, so conclusion, it's a nuclear matrix element are very sensitive to nuclear correlations. Um, nuclear correlations and so such experimental study of charge exchange reactions, single beta decays, and uh, muon nuclear reactions are very helpful. And uh, uh, these, particularly, I think that the renormalizations uh, can be studied uh, experimentally by using such, uh, you know, charge exchange reactions uh, in a very wide range of momentum transfer and angular momentum. But uh, uh, we really need uh, some coordinated works for double beta decay experiment and also nuclear matrix element because for double beta decades, uh, you know, if nuclear matrix element uh, because of renormalizations, not three but 1.5, the neutrino must, uh, you know, isotope mass needed to be not one ton but 15 tons and so on. So then we really need uh, to study this. Uh, this 1.5 metric element, then we need to 5 to 10 tons. So we really need, um, you know, 10 ton scale enriched isotopes with large nuclear matrix element. And experimentally, because uh, you know we do need energy resolutions and particle identifications uh, in order to separate signal from two neutrinos and uh, background coming from, from uh, solar neutrinos. Um, so, and finally, I think, uh, experimentally, I think some you know, coordinated experiment for neutron responses are very important for future. And our RCNP, we have a charge exchange reactions for beta minus beta plus and also gamma decays and muon. And the separation neutrino source that it's uh, in Oak Ridge and also muon and uh, neutrino at JPAC. But also, uh, you know, this Newman project, Newman project for heavy ion charge and double charge exchange are uh, very interesting for future experiment, I think. Okay, so I think thank you. Thank you very much. I think I have.